Namaste and welcome to this presentation on the FRM part 2 curriculum changes 2025 versus 2024. Now as the global financial industry evolves, GARP also tries to ensure that the FRM curriculum, particularly part 2 curriculum, it reflects the latest industry uh, trends including some regulatory updates or uh, some new risk management practices. So in this video, we'll provide uh, an uh, analysis of how the part two curriculum has been updated for 2025. So we'll highlight new additions, uh, which will include new chapters as well as new learning objectives. We'll also highlight revision to existing content, what has been streamlined or say removed to maintain relevance. Whether you are uh, uh, preparing for the FRM part two exam for the first time, or if you are retaking it, uh, this video is quite relevant for you. So uh, let's get started. Now in market risk measurement and management, we have one reading which has been deleted. Three readings have been added. Seven readings have been reordered. Three readings have been renamed as well as reordered. One learning objective has been added, one learning objective has been deleted and two learning objectives have been modified for existing readings. Okay, so of course for new chapters, uh, new readings which have been added, all the LOs will be new. So we will not discuss those. We are uh, including them in the list of newly added chapters only, right? Now, these are the list of deleted readings, only one in fact, which is MR6 messages from the academic literature on risk measurement. For the trading book it has been deleted then we have list of newly added readings so three highly quant intensive quantitative uh, kind of readings have been added which includes some mathematical processes also but of course the conceptual part will be more important so we have mr6 uh, validating bank holding companies var models for market risk then we have beyond exceedance based back testing of var models methods for back testing the entire forecasting distribution using probability integral transform and we have the third chapter mr16 the vesi check and the gauss plus models now let us see the list of reordered readings in fact we don't need to go through these uh, re, uh, the reordering because the name of the chapters are same it's just that mr7 uh, which was correlation basics definitions applications and terminologies has now become mr8 uh, similarly, MR8 has been pushed to MR9, MR9 has become MR10, MR13 has become MR14, uh, MR14 has become MR15, MR15 volatility smiles has become MR17 and finally MR16 fundamental review of the trading book has now become MR18. Okay. Now, uh, there are some chapters which have been renamed as well as reordered. So we have uh, a regression hedging and principal component analysis in 2025, which was earlier known as empirical approaches to risk metrics and hedging in 2024. Okay, so it was also uh, MR10. Then we have uh, MR12, which is arbitrage pricing with term structure models in 2025. It was earlier known as uh, Science of Term Structure Models in 2024. And we have MR13, uh, Expectations, Risk Premium, Convexity and the Shape of the Term Structure in 2025, which was earlier known as Evolution of Short Rates and the Shape of the Term Structure in 2024. And it was also MR12, not MR13 in the last year. Now let us come to the discussion of the modified or added or deleted learning objective. So to ensure a, a, a focused and a more impactful analysis, we will exclude some minor some minor modifications from our review. So uh, changes in wording or phrasing, uh, which do not fundamentally alter the core essence of a learning objective, those kind of uh, uh, learning objectives probably will not include okay so only material changes are included so what is excluded minor updates where the content remains the same but the just the phrasing has been slightly refined or reorganized we'll exclude them uh, and in, and also changes which just improve a little bit of clarity and emphasize on the existing material only or maybe they just align the terminology without introducing any new concepts that will be uh, excluded so what will be included? What will be considered as material? Okay. So if any uh, new, uh, any modified or uh, say, uh, yeah, modified learning objective, if it adds any kind of new material or if it extends the scope of the content, 
we will consider it as a material change okay so for example if there is a learning objective which uh, previously only focused on explaining a concept okay but now it explicitly mentions that uh, a calculation is included right it represents a change we will include that okay also if a change highlights any important part of the content uh, which was already taught but uh, now it receives a greater emphasis we will include it okay so in vr uh, in uh, sorry in market risk only uh, we the previous chapter which was back testing vr mr4 there was an lo uh, uh, verify a model based on exceptions or failure rate now there is a new lo in that same chapter evaluate the accuracy of uh, a vr model based on exceptions or failure rates uh, by using some kind of model verification test so basically it's the same thing right uh, it will be excluded we are not uh, including that because uh the additional wording uh, using model verification test it will not introduce any kind of uh, new material but it will just elaborate on the process of validation which was already a part of the uh, original intent in 2024 only okay so uh, let's start uh, with that one uh, learning objective for vr mapping which has been modified so earlier it was explain and demonstrate how the mapping process captures general and specific risks now uh this new part has been added apart from uh, that general and specific risk explanation you have to calculate these risks in a portfolio given a set of primitive risk factors because see earlier also this calculation was there but again since this calculation part has been emphasized this time we have considered it as a change in learning objective so that you can get an idea that this is also an important part of the uh, uh, content which can be tested in the exam then in mr11 regression hedging and principal component analysis one learning objective has been added which is explain why and how a regression hedge uh, differs from a hedge based on a reverse regression then next chapter we have mr13 uh, in this chapter one learning objective has been deleted evaluate the impact of changes in maturity yield and volatility on the convexity of a security it has been deleted and one learning objective has been modified uh, earlier it was calculate the price and return of a zero coupon bond incorporating a risk premium now we have to identify the components into which return can be decomposed and calculation part is almost the same okay calculate the expected return on a bond for a risk averse invest investor now let us come to cr uh, credit risk measurement and management in cr no readings deleted no readings added and only one uh, learning objectives we will consider as modified for existing readings so uh, only that one learning objective which is in cr5 so one learning objective which has been modified earlier it was estimate capital adequacy ratio of a financial institution now it is estimate risk weighted assets and capital adequacy ratio of a financial institution although again i am saying that the process of capital adequacy ratio was based on risk weighted assets only so anyways we will calculate that but now since it is explicitly mentioned that we have to estimate the risk weighted assets also it means that questions can be directly tested only on risk weighted assets as well also uh, again as i said there are some immaterial changes also like in cr 18 there was uh, an lo i mean we are not considering that explain the methods of managing defaults of uh, one or more members of, uh, of ccp but now it it has just just one or two words have been included explain uh, the different methods of absorbing losses and managing the defaults so it's the same thing right so again we are not going to include that okay now let's come to uh, this uh, operational risk and resilience again no uh, reading have been deleted and uh, sorry uh, no readings have been added okay and yeah no readings deleted no readings added and no learning objectives we will consider as modified over here also we have some chapters where just slight uh, rephrasing of the learning objectives is there which is uh, which we are not considering as material now let us come to the next part which is liquidity and treasury risk measurement and management lr now in this no re readings deleted no readings added one learning objective deleted and two learning objectives modified for existing readings 
so we have lr5 in this we have one learning objective which has been deleted summarize the process taken by a us bank to calculate its legal reserve it has been deleted and uh, we have lr16 in uh, this particular chapter or uh, reading sorry uh, one learning objective has been modified uh, earlier it was discussed how central uh, bank swap agreements it was focusing on central bank swap agreements how they overcame challenges commonly associated with international uh, lenders of last resort this time we have a general uh, policy response by international banks to alleviate the us dollar shortage and assess its effectiveness and in illiquid assets also one learning objective has been modified earlier it was evaluate portfolio choice decisions on the inclusion of illiquid assets this time also we have uh, allocation of illiquid assets only but we have to evaluate the impact and uh, including the impact on rebalancing and trading so there is a focus on the impact of uh, allocating illiquid on rebalancing illiquid assets sorry on rebalancing and trading and on optimizing the proportion of illiquid assets so there is a focus on that risk management and investment management im again no readings deleted no readings added and two los modified which are those los in portfolio construction im4 we have uh, one learning objective which has sorry i think earlier it was mentioned as yeah, im only we are mentioning im only not rm for risk management and investment management so im4 portfolio construction one learning objective has been uh, modified earlier it was distinguish among the inputs to the portfolio construction process now describe those inputs and explain the challenges so challenges part has been emphasized in im5 portfolio risks analytical methods earlier the learning objective was explain the risk minimizing position and the risk and return optimizing position now it is explain and calculate so calculation has been emphasized okay so calculation is also important now and finally we have current issues uh, which of course has most of the changes uh, like every time so nine readings have been deleted and eight readings have been added so these are the readings which have been deleted ci1 ci2 ci3 ci4 okay ci5 ci6 ci7 ci8 8 and in fact nine nine readings have been deleted only the ci10 which was there in last time has been actually retained and these are the new eight readings which have been added this year okay so ci 1 to 4 new readings 5 6 uh, 7 8 new readings and the previous ci 10 it becomes the new ci 9 this year okay so uh, we can just have a quick summary so total you can see that 11 new readings have been added three in mr and eight in ci 10 new readings have been deleted one in mr and nine in ci so as far as readings are concerned only mr and ci uh, have uh, changes in readings and total this time we have 104 readings of course previously there were 103 so one overall one new reading has been added but of course the three new readings uh, in mr which have been added they are <clears throat> quite significant quite substantial they will take some time as i mentioned earlier also they are heavily quants intensive and as far as LOs are concerned in existing readings, uh, as I mentioned that we will not consider the LOs of new readings because they all are new. In existing readings, one LO has been added in total, two LOs have been deleted in total and seven LOs have been modified. Okay, so this is the summary. So uh, this is what well, this was the detailed walkthrough of the uh, part two curriculum changes for 2025. We hope that this video will provide you with uh, some insights to streamline your preparation properly this time and focus on the new topics also and at Medafin we are committed to supporting all the FRM aspirants whether you choose to enroll with us or not if you have any questions any doubts or need guidance at any stage of your preparation please feel free to reach out okay we are always always there to help and additionally, we will just document all these changes uh, which we discussed in the slides and uh, you can access this information by clicking on the link in the description below. Okay, And we will also try to make sure that the PDF version of this document is also available for download so that uh, you can review it as your own, uh, at your own convenience. Okay? okay, fine. All the best. We wish you the very best for your FRM journey and of course the uh, 
key to success in the exam is always staying updated and always staying consistent. Namaste.